Do you want to know the secret sauce behind some of the top performers in coaching and real estate? If you answered yes, stay with us. We're about to reveal some of the top strategies from the top performers in coaching and real estate today. This is Mission to Margins. My name is Kevin. I'm the founder of NextCrest, and we are going deep today. Next level marketing, masterful marketing, advanced marketing, whatever you want to call it. We're going to talk about the real stuff. So if this is your first time at the channel, we don't waste time. We get right to it. So we're going to keep that promise and do just that. Let's dive right in. First up, let's talk about personal branding. Now, I know you've probably heard that phrase before. And what I want to really talk to you about is why it's important. It's really important because people hire people. They don't hire companies. And I want to say that again. People hire people. They don't hire companies. So your personal brand is everything to the legacy of your business. Now, if you're in real estate, it also gives you a little bit of mobility. You don't want to be tied to your brokerage. If you're a coach, you don't want to be tied to one program. You want to have three or four that you can offer to any different, different people at any time. But your personal brand is very important because it sets you up as the authority, as the expert, as the person who knows a lot in your niche, in that space. And that means you have to illustrate value. You have to illustrate competency. You have to really speak a different language. And that's the person that people want to be around. So in your personal brand, as you're going through how to brand, most people go to social media because um, it's free and everyone's already there. That's no problem. But you really want to ask yourself, am I speaking to the level and the caliber of client that I'm trying to attract or am I speaking in basics? And the point of that is that you want to build trust and credibility. Your personal brand should build trust and credibility with people you're trying to sell to eventually. And so how do you do that? You really got to establish yourself as this authority figure, an expert in the space. And that's the real juicy part about a personal brand is that it does the work for you once you get it going. And so take that same philosophy that people don't hire companies, they hire people and put it in your social media. People don't engage with companies, they engage with people. So we need to know the real you. We need to know what you're actually up to. We need to know what you know. You need to speak in a way that you normally speak. Everything should not be a commercial, please. And I'll be honest, I struggle with that. When I get on this camera, I try not to be the commercial. I try just to be Kevin, but sometimes it's hard. And so I want you to really think about that. What establishes you as an authority? It is you being a person, and that's why your personal brand is vital. Next, let's talk about content marketing. And I'm not talking about just posting content on Facebook or YouTube or anything like that, because people consume in different ways. Some people prefer to read a blog. Some people prefer to listen to a podcast. Some people prefer to read a post. Some people like to watch a video. People consume content in different ways. So you have to be diversified in the content that you put out. That's a content mix. So in content marketing, you know the value, consistency, all that. I've talked about it before. There's plenty of videos about that. Your content mix has to showcase the various ways in which people find your value. You need a blog. You should do a video. You should be on a podcast. You should put a long form post, do a short form, do a tweet. Is it still called tweet? I think so. I digress. Anyway, it is about diversifying your content so that no matter which way people process and ingest your value, they have an opportunity to do it in the way they prefer. And the goal ultimately in that content mix is to put out content that people find valuable and that they want to share. The engagement of the content is really what we're going for, but the share is kind of the holy grail. If you'll share my content, that's really what I want. I want this video to be so valuable that you say, hey, come over here and look at this. <laughs> and that's what we're going for here. So as you're looking at your content and your content mix, make sure that you're going at it with the right intention of, is this shareable or not? Master marketing really hones in on this idea, social proof. And what we mean by that, it's your testimonials, it's your referrals, it's all the things that we, we have, but social proof is a voice in the marketplace that is louder than your voice will ever be. Will ever be. Think about it. Think about it. If someone says, that restaurant is excellent, what do you do first? It's not go to the restaurant and eat. You go online, you look at the reviews, you see what people are saying. Even if someone you care about a lot, your partner, your spouse, your family says, go eat at this restaurant, you're gonna love it, you still go and read the reviews. Why? Because we need social proof. Social proof is the loudest voice in marketing. And if we can convey social proof, not you saying, I did a great job for them, but them saying, that person did a great job for me, that is something that will get you much further in marketing than anything else we talk about. So you want to kind of be putting that content out there. That's why you'll see coaches who are interviewing their clients 
on live on Facebook. Why? That's social proof. That's a testimonial, right? We, we're not stupid. We know what's going on, right? But we still love it. We love it. Same in real estate. You know, the testimonials, not just they did a great job. It's like, what made that job great? Get into the nitty gritty. Ask them specifics. That social proof will go a long way as you create your marketing. Lastly, I really want to talk about this idea of uh, it's, it's super important for people to have a referral-based business or um, to, to have organic traffic. And I, I'm all for that. I love that. But we can't neglect the fact that master marketing requires some advertising, which means you're paying someone else to deliver your message to people you don't know yet. And that's where Facebook ads, Google ads, YouTube ads, uh, Instagram ads, TikTok ads, uh, billboards, wrap your car, whatever you're doing to, to generate leads, those things, we want to understand that organic and referrals are part of the business. They can't be the whole business because it's not predictable. If I run a Facebook ad and I know that I put a hundred bucks behind it and it delivers to 2000 people and of those 2000 people over three times of doing that, I get 20 leads. That's a pretty good math equation that says that works. It's predictable. And now I can scale that. I can you know, put more juice behind it. Maybe I do $200 next time and instead of 20 leads, I got 40 leads. You know, so you don't wanna overlook the idea of paid traffic, paid ads, paid opportunities to get in front of people. If you're a coach and you're going to an event and they want you to speak, but they're gonna charge you $3,000 to speak, if it's the right audience, you should do it. You should do it. If it's the right audience and you can make an offer, I should say, you know, if you're a real realtor and you're, you're paying for things that go out into the world, postcards, you know, you want to make sure that those postcards, if you send enough, how much, how many leads are you getting back? So don't overlook the fact that we love re referrals. We love organic traffic, but we have to have something that's predictable in our business. If we're going to call ourselves marketing masters, we really do. So if you're not doing paid ads, look into it. That'll be for another video, but you really want to consider diversifying your ways of marketing and not relying on the things that are unpredictable, rely mostly on the things that are predictable. All right, I hope I gave you a little different perspective today on how you can master your own marketing. And if you found this video valuable, give me a little like. Maybe you share it with someone that you love. Say, hey, this will help you out a lot. I hope you do that. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. You know that drill. My name is Kevin. I hope we'll see you next time. Take care.